Ugh. Hey there, I just filmed my first sports commercial film video thingy, fitness thing. I don't know what to call it, but point is, when I put it on Instagram, people seem to fuck with it. You fucked with it if you saw it. And for that reason, I'm gonna break it down here and just, you know, maybe learn a thing or two. So, first of all, we need a bit of backstory. One day I was just sitting around on my phone and I got a DM. Picked it up and see, it's from a man rivaling the strength of fucking Zeus. And his name was Franco. He was after some video content for his new fitness YouTube channel and he wanted to have a meeting with me about working together. I replied, and next thing I knew, we were at a coffee shop kicking around ideas about location, visual style, music, and overall tone. For the 40 minutes, we had enough for me to go off and hammer out the final details. And then, a couple of days later, I assembled the crew, which was myself and my close friend Matt, to take care of the lighting and BTS. Then, it was off to the races, and this is what we got. You gotta have the mentality to show up every fucking day of your life. No matter what life throws at you. It's our responsibility to show up to the Coliseum of life. Prepare for fucking battle. I don't care what you're going through, what life's throwing at you. It's your responsibility to find your new hundred percent. So now you've watched that, we can get into breaking down how it was actually filmed. Big shout out to Denny Gewurz because he inspired this whole video and was a big inspiration in helping me film sports related content. So yeah, go check out his stuff, great. But besides that, let's break this video down into the five key parts, which is the gear, locations, how it was shot, the edit and the color grade. Okay, so first thing's the gear, which is, well, what we're shooting on. And for me, pretty much all my shoots are the exact same as this. So if you're ever curious what the fuck I use, it's pretty much this list. So for this video, I used exactly what you're looking at right now, which is the A7 III with a 24-70G Master 2.8. Pricey setup, but great. Very versatile, and I literally don't use anything else. 90% of the time, I'm using this lens. I also shot gimbal and handheld. Handheld, I use these bad boys. Gimbal, I use the Ronin S. And for the lighting setup, I used what I'm using now, the Aperture 120 d for softbox, and a couple, actually no, three of these stick lights, the Yongyo V3s. All right, locations. I chose four total spots for this entire video. A beach in the city, a scenic lookout called Kangaroo Point, a big park, and a gym late at night. So I actually opted to shoot this video over the period of two days at sunset, and night time for the second day. That's because I didn't want to miss out on the sunlight. I wanted to get gold now, like the perfect gold now for each day. And I couldn't have done that in all three locations at sunset that I wanted to, if I only shot in one day. I'd have to compromise. But we had the time available to shoot over two days, so picked that. The reason I chose these spots was obviously because they looked great and they were visually unique, but mainly because they had great opportunities for different forms of working out. In the beach, I could get Franco to do high intensity cardio, kicking up a lot of sand and dust, so that looks great on film. And then when he's skipping, I can have a, shot, a hero shot of the back of the city, which looked amazing. That's why it's one of the opening shots. Then stairs, pretty obvious. Stair climbs. Fucking hate them, but they look cool. And then park, yeah, you guess. Big sunlight. Oh look, we got leaves, we got trees. He's working out in the park, look at him go. And then yeah, gym. I wonder why we put a gym in this video, because it's a workout video. Of course it's a gym. It looks cool. So let's talk how it was shot and what I did to my camera to get the exact look I wanted. So two things I did with my camera was, I opted out of a gimbal for most of the shots. I shot handheld and I overcranked my shutter. And the reason I shot handheld was because it makes the footage look a lot more energetic and gritty when really not much is going on in the frame. If someone's just lifting weights, it's a really boring activity just seeing, uh, uh. And then I overcranked my shutter. And that's because when you go like, ooh, <laughs> with your camera, you add a lot of motion blur. So overcranking your shutter reduces motion blur. So all in all, it just evens out to a bit more of a crisper frame so you can actually see what the fuck's happening. And both together really lead to that visual language of hyper-masculinity and just raw power within the frame. Because that's what I'm trying to achieve, it's a workout video. I want the audience to feel inspired and strong, just like what you're watching. Someone inspirational and strong. So, try to play it into the thematic themes of visual masculinity and blah blah, art student bullshit. I don't know what to say, I'm making this up. Now, still within how I shot it, let's talk lighting. 
A couple main things I did with it is, first of all, I shot a lot of it at sunset, which means not much lighting technique to it. Just put the sun there, it's five, and just chuck it behind it. Backlit everything. Cinematographer's golden rule. If you ever want to make something look great, especially at sunset, shoot backlit. So that means put the sun behind your object, or at least three quarters backlit. You know, look at a diagram. You'll figure it out. Google's your friend. That is the golden rule. Usually just always put the light behind your subject if you're ever in daylight, and it will just look more cinematic because everyone in cinema does it. So another technique we used for the interior was we lit everything top lit. We turned off the house lights and we stuck some lights to the ceiling because we don't want everything to be bright. We want to just focus like a cone of light right on top of the subject. And to do that, we literally taped these lights to the ceiling. And we may be wondering, why top lit? That's because if you ever look at a comic book or any form of like musculature, it's usually lit from the top because it's just the most flattering. It makes you look really fucking strong. So if you go look at Batman, go look at Spider-Man, all those absolute chads out there, they're all mostly drawn from the perspective of top lit because it just flatters the muscles on man. All right, and the last technique was daylight balancing our scene, which is a criminally underrated technique. For all the gym scenes, you can see that the lights are clearly blue and the skin is clearly lit for daylight source. It's all pretty normal. You think, oh, RGB or something. Wrong. You're wrong. It's actually all filmed at a daylight balance of incandescent on camera. So we set my camera to incandescent daylight balance and all the lights are actually white. All the back lights are actually set to 5600 Kelvin and all the key light, this one was set to 3200 Kelvin. It had an orange gel on it. So key light was actually tungsten and our back lights are actually daylight. Then we just shifted it all down so the back lights were now blue and then the key light was now white. And that way, you don't have to worry about separating skin tones from background and post. When it came to color grading, all the background was blue. All the skin tones were daylight balance. So easy, I didn't have to color pick shit for hours on end. I just got to color grade as is. And that way I could really push it far apart to get that nice teal and orange look. Because the gym does not look teal and orange, the gym looks like shit. And that's how we got it to look so cinematic. So, second last thing was the editing. Really not much to do in the editing room. I simply just picked a song, chucked it in there, and started cutting to the beat. I shot everything with a wide, a mid, and a close-up, and I just got to pick and choose whatever I felt best. And then to give the video an actual decent feel and structure to it, I started slow, and then I just sped up the cuts as time went along. To the point where the cuts ramped up exponentially and got extremely fast and then dropped off. So the biggest work was really done in the sound designing process. And I did two things. I added a lot of Atmos and a lot of rising tones to give the thing a big feel. And then the other thing I did was I added a lot of impact sounds, a lot of beefiness to make all the hits and the fucking breathing and just like all the human sounds more impactful and they sound right to your ear. So first thing I did was I added Shepherd's tone. If you can hear it, the whole entire video, it has this rising feel in your gut. You feel energetic, you feel alive. That's because I put a Shepherd's tone. And that's a tone that constantly rises. It's a little psychological trick. You can look it up, but the point is it has three tones that constantly rise up and they kind of cross over each other. So it's always rising. And then I added a lot of rising sound effects to every cut and transition to kind of like ease you in subconsciously to the next cut. On top of that, I added the beef to the sound design. I put in all the hit sound effects, put in all the running sound effects, the whooshes, the wahs, the blah, 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 the fucking punches. I just added that human feel to it. I really amped up all the hits and the impacts, or at least best as I could. And just kind of helped with the overall atmos. So for that said, let's actually just listen to the video without any music and just the sound design. So yeah, that's sound design, and you can see it really plays a big part in the visuals, even if you can't really tell it's there. And then last thing is color grading, and for that it really didn't do too much. I gave it just a very light teal and orange look, just with the hues tool, and obviously all the basic color correction you need to do to make the footage look well exposed, 
Other than that, really not much. For the outside scenes, made it just a bit nice and warmer, kept with the natural earthy tones, didn't really fuck with it too much. And then for the interiors, I just kind of hue shifted all the blues and the skin tones, just so what was shot in camera was a bit more balanced to what I actually had in my mind. So yeah, anyway, that's it. If you enjoyed this little breakdown and you learned a thing or two, feel free to like and subscribe and go follow me on Instagram, which is here. And if you like Franco and his content, feel free to go follow him on Instagram and go watch his YouTube channel, which is all here and down below on YouTube places. Because this whole thing wouldn't be possible without him. So just pay him my respects. Thank you, Franco. And can't wait to make another one. Boop, boop. Man can lift weight, bro. Man straight lift. This man lifts He's big rock.